guys. Uh, my name is Nancy Lublin, and I am the CEO and Chief Old Person at DoSomething.org, which is the largest organization for teenagers in America. And um, probably what's more interesting for you guys at We Did It is that I'm sort of a serial social entrepreneur. Um, for some reason, I guess I have an aversion to money, and I keep starting things, uh, charities, not-for-profits. Um, so who are you guys? Tell me about We Did It. Sure. So my name is Sue Sani. I'm the co-founder and CEO of We Did It. And I'm Ben Lamson, and I'm a co-founder and the chief operating officer. And We Did It, we're a web platform and mobile app that enables nonprofits to empower anyone to come, become a fundraiser on their behalf anywhere, anytime. So kind of a crowded space, right? I mean, you've got CrowdRise, Indiegogo, there's a whole bunch of stuff in that space. and. They've been going at it for a while. Um, what's different? Yeah, so we really got inspired by a couple things. One, the lack of uh, available technologies for in-person fundraising that enabled individuals to utilize their mobile devices. We saw some great solutions in this. You mean Square? Yep, but the big issue is Square. Square? Yep, exactly. Square is actually what we got inspired by. Some of our clients were using it. The big issue is Square is it's designed for merchants. It's designed for coffee shops and artists. Um, you're not capturing donor data, you're not linked to a back-end CRM, and you can't put it in the hands of volunteers, you know, across the country per se. Um, you can put it in the hands of a couple trusted staff members, but if you really want to have, really gain your reach and really increase donor acquisition, you want to enable your current supporters to fundraise on your behalf. So we've actually... So doesn't, doesn't, doesn't everybody who does a, uh, you know, a, a transaction want to acquire a tribe and do user acquisition to keep in touch with them later? I mean, artists, um, a jewelry maker, even like a taxi driver. Um, why would you guys limit yourself then and think of this as a not-for-profit fundraising product and not as an on-the-ground payments processor with um, user acquisition? Yeah. And that's a good question, and we definitely see the opportunity to launch into other verticals in the future, but our background was in consulting and the nonprofit sector, and we knew we could approach this market first and, and be much more likely to be successful here than in a B2C realm of, you know, looking for merchants, like you said, taxi drivers or artists. We knew how to pick up the phone and get in touch with nonprofits and, and sell them on this, these ideas. So from, from a tech standpoint, so you're starting with what you know. Yeah, from a, from a tech standpoint, though, our technology and our products could apply to those other verticals. So we keep that in mind, you know. And I think our plan is to really dominate this space, really show that we know what we're doing, um, and that at a, at a certain point in time, we'll actually be able to move into other verticals. Tough. Not lots of things break out of like the not-for-profit space and then into other exciting verticals. I'm not sure if I can name any um, <laughs> off the top of my yeah, head. It's, uh, it's not seen as like a, a hotbed of technological innovation in the not-for-profit space, but it's okay. You'll be the first. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think specifically <laughs> we see two verticals in, in political fundraising and then higher ed um, that are extremely re relevant to what we're all already doing. Um, you know, political fundraising, I think that, so, that it doesn't require much of an explanation. Higher ed is going to be more of an interesting nut to crack in the sense that all student groups, whether it's the alumni relations department or the rugby club, they're all fundraising. And there doesn't seem to be a real seamless kind of dominant solution in that space yet. And I think it's because no one's really built something. They're all fundraising. Yeah. It's all fundraising from poor people. So. Uh, students who have no money, and also a few of them have credit cards now, so that's harder. And uh, and not for profits who are who are of course known for having lots and lots of money. It just seems like your sweet spot is really at the low end of the market. You you may be making kind of more work for yourselves. And also the students are not necessarily like repeat contributors to the rugby club and things like that. Um, I think what you want if you're going to acquire a tribe is something that's going to come back again and again and again. Um, so. Uh, I think the idea of the technology is pretty exciting, and um, and I do think it's a pretty significant improvement on Square um, that you can then keep in touch with the people who have processed a payment through you and level them up or over to something else. Um, but uh, so, so talk to me about this low end of the market because I saw on your website there the the campaigns that you have there as case studies are sort of small campaigns. It's like ten thousand dollars from not so well known not for profits. What's do you think is your real sweet spot? What do you guys really want to go with this? Yeah, 
So I think uh, what's displayed as far as the case studies is more of uh, we haven't updated the site in our recent successes. We've been fortunate in the last you know three to four months to really grow significantly. Um, not com in comparison to the big players in the space, but in comparison where we were six months ago. And now we're to the point where we're uh, fairly consistently raising, you know, fifty to hundred thousand dollars for small nonprofits who, you know, previously have been un unable to obtain those types of fundraising goals. Um, we had a really exciting. Okay, guys, you got to keep the website up to date. Yep. You got to keep the website up to date. If the answer to my question is we haven't updated the website, that's totally in your control. Yep. And what you're showing right now on the website is like ten thousand dollar campaigns. It's a success. If you've done fifty to hundred thousand dollar campaigns, that's great. But tell the world. Yes, that's Doesn't true. do any good to just phone your mom and let her know. Like show the world, especially <laughs> since you're in this Wall Street Journal thing. Oh my gosh. If Martin Luther King had given his I have a dream speech at home in the shower, we'd be nowhere today. Okay? <laughs> like you you need an audience, you need the world to see it. You're right. How about how about this? I bet we can update the website in within a couple weeks of a completely new design as well as the updated case study. Honestly, I don't give a about the design. Just put the case study up there. Like a couple of weeks? Seriously, you're in the middle of this Wall Street Journal startup of the year competition right now. Like before you go to sleep tonight, you should put those new case studies on there. The design of the website, no one, we did it. It's, it's about functionality. It's about the ease of use of your product, which is great. And, and it doesn't seem like you've had complaints. It seems like people are easy, able to learn it on their own. It's intuitive. That's fantastic. That's great. The website? I mean, I really don't get, don't waste any more money on the website. The website is just like an online brochure, right? right? You're not processing anything um, really there that's significant. So don't worry about it, but update your case studies. Okay. Got it. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. Um, you mentioned something about <laughs> where, we, where we're going in the market and how right now we're really more attracted to some of the smaller organizations. And, um, you know, a big, a big, big thing for us is trying to get out to larger organizations, the United Ways. The American Red Cross, the you know those huge organizations that have a large volunteer base. Um, do you have any suggestions on how we can get in front of them, or you know ways our product can be tailored for that kind of uh, that size of an organization? I think you need to have a keen understanding for what they're using now. Are they using Convio, eTapestry? Um, you know what does the fundraising um, look like now, and what are their pain points? Um, I know that, um, for example, um, the United Way is making some changes on sort of who they focus on. Very important to them is workplace giving. That's a huge, huge um, uh, source of revenue for the United Way. How does that affect what you do and, and, and um, your product offering and then who the best person is to talk to? So in some companies, the best person to talk to might be the CIO or the CTO because you're offering a, a, a simple technological solution. Wouldn't surprise me if at the United Way, the best person to talk to was like whoever heads up those corporate giving campaigns um, because that person has muscle internally at the United Way. Yeah. On, on that same kind of note of, of corporate giving, one, we really feel that no one's really cracked the nut in seamlessly kind of creating a community that to match corporate sponsorships and corporate donors with potential organizations. Um, and I wanted to kind of see if you had some insight or some advice and some best ways to approach that, whether we should be going to agencies first, whether it should be going to the corporations. I just feel like there's a, a lot of missed opportunity in the corporate giving space. Yeah, I think corporate cause marketing is a whole separate beast from what you guys are doing. Um, and you're right, it's a big field and there's a lot going on there, but it's it's really totally different. It's not based on a proprietary technology. It's all based on relationships and you'd have to execute then on what the what happens with those contributions, which you don't really want to do. Yeah. Um, you want to be a payments processor in the middle. So um, uh, I do think, however, you should look at America's Charities, which is sort of a smaller kind of rival to United Way. Um, and there are a whole bunch of these, um, and they've globbed onto what's called the combined federal campaigns. If you're interested in workplace giving, uh, the biggest workplace giving are with the biggest workplaces in the country, federal employees. So it's called the CFC, yeah. Combined Federal um, Campaigns. You should definitely look at that stuff. Um, and give a call to Steve Delphin. He's the CEO down there at America's Charities. Tell him I say hi. That was fast. Um, that was fast. That was awesome. I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. I know. That was good. You know where to find me. And um, yeah, good luck. Thanks so much, Nancy. Cool. Nancy.